Welcome to the Nerd Normie Podcast. I'm a big film nerd, Everett. And I'm Emerald, and I'm engaged to a nerd. On this week's episode, we will be doing two movies. The Marvels, directed by Nia DaCosta. And Theater Camp, directed by Molly Gordon and Nick Lieberman. Uh, For both of these movies, we will do non-spoilers and then spoilers. Time codes will be down in the description below. Let's get into it. Carol Danvers, prodigal child of the Milky Way. Nick Fury. My favorite one-eyed man of intrigue. How goes it out there? Uh, you know, cold, no air, space. All right. Um, so this week, I technically didn't choose the Marvels. Uh, we got free tickets from his work. Neither of us are really Marvel people. Him more so than me is one. Um, I have only seen, like, four of the movies ever. Um, and so this one wasn't really on my to-watch list, but after seeing it, I'm using it as my pick because I really, really liked it. Um, so yeah, this one follows Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, as well as Monica and, uh, Miss Marvel from the TV show Miss Marvel. They all have light-based powers and through just you know a series of well I guess I could explain that too there is a villain in this um I found her boring and forgettable yeah um it's not that she wasn't played well it's just she just wasn't for me um but she's been opening up all of these jump points in space that are kind of messing with the universe and uh Captain Marvel and then Monica touch it at the same is her name monica yeah okay uh touch it at the same time and at the same time as that uh miss marvel is touching her wristband which is connected to the other wristband that's causing the jump points to be created and so in doing this it like intertwines all three of their powers so anytime they use them at the same time they switch places um which, you know, causes chaos and hijinks and silliness. Um, And then they kind of have to figure out how to use all of their powers together in order to defeat this bad guy. And I don't remember her name because, as I said, the villain in this, forgettable. Yeah, I mean, that being said, I appreciated that the villain was simple and easy didn't ruin the vibe of the movie didn't try and upstage things wasn't too evil and dark and violent it was she was a good pace for these heroes she was a good level of villain for them to fight having to try and work on their switching powers together um and like it's back to the early days of marvel where the villain was someone of similar powers who showed up for one movie gets beat and disappears and why is that like it's forgettable and whatever and she's not going to be you know the next thanos or you know anything like that but you already have kang in this universe why i don't want a more complicated villain and i feel like yes it's the weakest part of the movie but it's also like if you see anything bad about this movie that's not from the perspective of like it's women or it's not funny which just means comedy wasn't for you fair enough or you're sexist or just like have a agenda against these Marvel movies for whatever reason it exists. Um, it's like, why, why do you have to hate the villain? She's not disrupting the movie. She's not actively bad at her role. I'm not saying that's what you're doing at all. I'm just online. Like people are like, this is the worst Marvel villain ever. She ruins every, why would they do that? And it's like, whoa, the movie's not about her. The movie's about these three people having funky powers and they have to punch someone so they have a villain. Yeah, and again, I'm, like, not a Marvel person, so me not liking this villain doesn't really mean anything. I would have liked the movie if it was just the three girls learning to use their powers together and doing double dutch the whole time. Like, I thought that was very funny. I thought it was very cute. There were a ton of funny moments. And so in my opinion, it didn't need a villain, but it's not going to be a Marvel movie without one. So that's just coming from me in terms of I don't really care for Marvel movies and I would have just liked a silly hijinks movie of superheroes. <laughs> so, you know. Um, but yeah, so... 
that's kind of the lowdown without giving any spoilers away. Um, I mean, I will say it's one of the funniest Marvel movies I've seen. It's one yeah. of the most enjoyable ones, and I've seen everything but Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, I believe. So that bit except like it's one of the funniest marvel movies probably only thor ragnarok is outright funnier uh than this one and yeah it's just i don't know i don't get the the hate i don't get the bad reviews i don't get the i get the low box office from just the perfect storm of things going against this movie i do not think it's the movie's fault and i am glad that i've seen online like the cast members being like hey look we made a movie and it's not doing well that's not necessary like that's not us don't use this as a stick to beat us with we're just we're gonna move on and not worry about that side of things that's on disney for basically not promoting this correctly like they did a whole legacy trailer that just showed clips from old movies when What's good about this movie? The current characters who are funny and charming. Yeah, Miss Marvel is so cute and so funny. It does make me want to watch the TV show, even though I'm not a Marvel person, because she is just so darling, and she was really the highlight of the whole movie. And I also liked that her being there made Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, like, open up more and be more funny, because, like she should lean into that because she's funny too it it just it really made the whole movie really worthwhile and i think marvel has a real issue anytime there's someone who knows about superheroes and is getting brought on a team they're excited to be there all the heroes that are there go like uh just this young annoying kid blah blah and do the like tough love or like put pressure on them or try and seem cool and it was refreshing to just have them be like oh hey like that's cool that you know who i am and we're gonna hang out and be friends what's so wrong with that like obviously she was acknowledged the kind of silliness of having you know waking up in a room completely surrounded by her own posters because she swapped places with this teenage girl and like i don't know i think it all just played out really well it was really funny and i would recommend going to see it yeah for sure all right head into spoilers yep all right uh spoilers for the marvels um, as I said, this they all swap powers, or not really swap powers, but they swap places whenever they use their powers. And then the villain, she is from this planet that um, they were, I don't know, having like a civil war or something, and Captain Marvel went and destroyed this intelligence that was kind of controlling everyone, but in doing so, she sent their planet into just eternal darkness and horribleness and... It was not great, um, and this takes place 30 years later when this girl's tri- woman lady is trying to uh, restore all that by stealing, you know, like water from a planet that um, Captain Marvel calls home because Captain Marvel is her enemy, or stealing the sun from Earth because that's another place that Captain Marvel calls home. Um, and yeah, they have to stop her. Um, a whole bunch of people die and like the teenage girl realizes that you can't save everyone and that's like sad um and then uh the best scene of all time in any movie ever is when all of the alien cats well the alien cat has a whole bunch of kittens and they're running around swallowing people with their giant tentacle mouths while memory from cats plays in the background and i think it is hysterical i have told everyone that i've talked to in the last week about it because it was the funniest cutest scene i've seen in a movie in forever it and was pretty great i loved it um yeah, just like the interactions between Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel were just really, really cute. Um, obviously, at the end, they beat the bad guy, and <clears throat> in doing so, she had opened this thing, portal, rip in time space. And in order to close it, uh, Monica has to go into it uh, to close it, but she knows that she can't come back out, so she seals herself up in this and wakes up in an X-Man lab thing. Um, so that's probably going to go into something, but I I don't know. I didn't really super care for Monica's character. I mean, she was there. She was there, but she wasn't my favorite. She didn't have as cute of interactions. 
oh, there's also a musical planet. I forgot yeah, about that. <laughs> that's what I was going to bring up. Yeah, you yeah. can talk about it. <laughs> they, uh, they go to a planet that's like 99% water, and uh, it turns out Captain Mar- Marvel to like um, clear up some diplomatic issues or whatever they were having. She, had her, she was friends with the prince there, and they got married on a diplomatic level but are not in a relationship. They're just friends. Uh, but the catch to this planet, other than being mostly water, uh, is that they speak by singing the English language. And so you just hear it as them singing everything. But to them, it's a different language and they can't understand you unless you sing. So then uh, Captain Marvel puts on a pretty gown and they do a whole dance number together, singing back and forth to each other. And the whole crowd's there singing with them. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then my favorite joke of the movie uh they're like okay now we need to be serious and the guy stops singing goes oh okay and they go wait he can speak and she goes yeah he's bilingual (laughs) but the whole thing's been in the english language and it's just it's hilarious it worked perfectly well i think the only bummer is that there wasn't more of it or like some of the other like i think miss marvel could have been a little more involved in having fun on this planet and seeing the fun side of captain marvel and Monica then could also get some character growth and development because she's probably, ironically, with Captain Marvel being the, the most serious of the three. Yeah, because, like, she plays Captain Marvel's niece. So if you've seen Captain Marvel, the little girl, she's all grown up now, and now she has superpowers. Or if you've seen WandaVision, she's in that. Yeah. Um, and she's kind of mad because Captain Marvel never came back to hang out with her or see her, which does suck, but also... You know, she's, like, saving the world or whatever. Um, But, yeah, so she, like, is grumpy with her the whole time. And so she's just kind of, like, I don't know. She's fine. She's played well. She's She has cool powers. But she just wasn't as likable as the other two, I would say. Um, But, yeah, that's pretty much the movie. They defeat the bad guy. And Monica gets trapped with the X-Men. Yeah. Oh, and um, Miss Marvel's putting together a young group of a young avengers yeah she goes and gets the girl from hawkeye which when i saw that i went oh yeah hawkeye was a thing yeah which is not a great sign but <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so what would you rate it um see this is also an issue because we went back and watched one of our old things and we watched our review for guardians of the galaxy 3 um, and apparently we gave that a seven. Well, I said a seven for a Marvel, but for me, a five or a six. Um, um, but I would change that score. I would give the Guardians of the Galaxy three, maybe like a four or a five, maybe a six in terms of Marvel movies. But for my own personal movies, a four or five. I totally forgot we even watched it. Yeah, I would change that score. So for this one, I would give it like a seven or a seven and a half in terms of both Marvel movies and movies that I like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I go higher. I'm going like an eight or a nine. Probably an eight and a half would be. Maybe for Marvel movies, I'd give it a nine because it's definitely by far my favorite one I've seen. I thought it was really funny and cute. But in terms of like my own movies, besides like the couple scenes that I really thought were super funny and cute, I wouldn't see myself like rewatching it a ton. Yeah. So I'd give it like a seven. That's fair. Whereas like I have seen all the Marvel movies and most of the TV shows, like I'm a bit more of a fan uh, and I could definitely see myself in like a month or two when it's on Disney plus being like, Oh, Hey, that's on there. You know what? I'm looking for just something fun and enjoyable I like to rewatch old Marvel movies from time to time, and generally that was Thor Ragnarok because it's the funniest one, and now we have another funniest one. So I would go with that with uh, an eight and a half for this one. Nice. She's entangled our light based powers, so we switch places whenever we use them. Strong theory. All right, for my pick this week, I went with Theater Camp, which came out, um, well, it premiered way back at Sundance. Uh, last January, uh, and then went had a limited theater run sometime this summer, I believe it was. Uh, a friend of mine at work had just recently watched this and was like, hey, it was actually really, really funny and great. You should check it out. 
and we did a lot of traveling this week and i was not up for sitting in the theater for three hours for napoleon which apparently is fine uh and i did not really want to go to the movies to see wish yeah we drove for 16 (laughs) hours yesterday coming back from my mom's house for thanksgiving so we're just we're ready to be home. <laughs> yeah, and an hour and a half comedy that's supposed to just be light and breezy. I was like, yes, that's what I want to watch today. Uh, so that's what we watched. And it's 90 minutes. It's light and breezy. We laughed. We had fun. If yeah. you if you are part of the theater world or ever were, I think this will really resonate with you. Um, my sister did theater at school. I never really did. I know you did a fair bit. So I've always been kind of tangential to the world. You grew up much more yeah, I in was, line with these kids. I've been in play. Well, I was in plays every single year from the time I was like four until I was in high school. I think that's when I stopped. So, And you I, would do like a, not a sleepaway camp, but you did. Yeah, I did like a summer camp type thing where we'd go and do a play I did the up with kids I don't know if you guys have heard of that but yeah we did up with kids my sister and I every year so um I thought it was really funny it's the kind of movie I'd recommend for people who are theater people if you're not a theater person you'll think it's fine like I don't think it was that great if you are a theater person you'll probably think it is hysterical but if you're like not (laughs) you'll probably just think it's fine Which is, yeah, it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I definitely, I think it builds as it goes. It's one of those movies, it sets it up and it starts and you're going, you're like, okay, yeah, this is fun. It's cute. It's whatever. Uh, And as it keeps going, I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like it, if I'm connected to this story or these characters enough for it to resonate with where it was seemed to be going. Um, But the kind of third act uh theater production portion uh is phenomenal and really really great and i think really just brought everything together really nicely um and so i think a lot of times especially uh movies we've watched recently they the, never stick the they landing. never stick the landing they have a great premise and then it kind of falls apart whereas this had kind of just a generic premise of kids go to theater camp and there are counselors. But it sticks that landing but really it good. it <laughs> really pulls it together and makes it worth your time. And again, only an hour and a half. So it's not like you're committing a huge chunk. You don't have to watch 10 episodes. You don't have to watch a three-hour movie. It's not a part one. It's a just a light, breezy comedy. Yeah, and I think it's only available to rent right now. So, like, as I said before, if you're a theater person, I'd recommend renting it just so you can watch it because it is really funny. If you're not, I would just wait for it to go to, like, regular streaming where you don't have to pay for it. And, and it's definitely worth a watch. It's funny if you're just, like, you know, looking for a quick, funny movie to watch. It's, it's yeah. cute. It's good. Yep. Um, and one of our favorites, Ayo Adabiri, showed up which was great always Mm. fun to see her queen love Um, her i think she's one of the most underrated (laughs) actresses right now of our time she's She's amazing so funny (laughs) um yeah and i think in terms of like knocks against this movie the weakest part it doesn't start strong but also i didn't get to know any of the kids super well which i thought i would a bit more not super well but like They kind of just came and went in scenes and any of them could be interchanged at any moment. Yeah. Um, And I thought, I thought the way kind of the emotional resonance of this was going to come together is one of the like counselors or the main guy, Troy, um, were going to kind of build a relationship with the students and it was going to be that. And that's kind of how it goes, but in a much looser generic Wait, I wouldn't hard. put Troy as the main character. I would. Put, I mean, he's in eighty percent of the scenes. I guess that's true. I would have put the two, <laughs> yeah, uh, Ben Platt There's and his three. friend. Yeah, I guess that's true. There's kind of three main characters. There's two friends, and then there's a guy who kind of happens to be involved in this camp for this year. Um, and I thought he, the guy who happens to be there was going to connect with a student or something and that's what was going to kind of resolve his story but it didn't quite pan out like that but again i really like the ending so maybe that's 
not such a bad thing. Yep. All right, uh, that's it for non-spoilers. Let's head into spoilers. All right, spoilers for theater camp. Um, there is this lady, Joan, who runs a theater camp in the Adirondacks, which is not far from where I grew up, and I went to summer camp in the Adirondacks. Very different vibe. Um, and... Yeah, so she, within the first two minutes of the movie, you find out she ends up in a coma. Uh, And so her son, Troy, who's just like a... Doofus. A doofus finance bro who never actually went to college for finance. He just does like a pod... Not even a podcast, like a... He has like a TikTok. Like a streaming, yeah. He like live streams on a GoPro about his entrepreneurship, even on Troy entrepreneurship even yeah. though he hasn't done anything with his life he has to take over yeah so he has to take over and he ends up finding out the camp the bank is going to foreclose on it because they are not making their payments um and there's a rich camp next door uh who want to buy out the land and repurpose their portion of the lake and cabins and all of that stuff to just do more rich people stuff um and at first he's kind of it's not that he's like not taking it seriously but he's coming at it from his lens of like oh whatever this is fun i'm just doing this because it was my mom's thing i don't really care i didn't go as a kid i wanted nothing to do with this and i'm just gonna sprinkle a little of my genius on this and it will all be solved and he very quickly realizes that saying dumb things like on troy ship is not actually how you run a business <laughs> and that you actually have to you know open your bills yeah. and and he's like sweet like he doesn't judge anyone who's there really like he immediately he has steps, a good heart yeah he immediately steps in and is trying to do anything he can think of to get the money for this he's just dumb <laughs> yeah and so like everyone's dealing with their own things and they're being petty and stupid because they don't realize that the place is about to close and yeah it's just it's really cute and then at the end they put on their original play which is joan still which is you know the life story of joan the theater camp owner and you know how she ended up where she is and everything and um at the very last minute the lady who was or the girl the kid who's supposed to play joan she gets hired uh, finally to like go do I don't know some acting job somewhere so she leaves camp and they're like scrambling for the last day to figure out what to do so the <laughs> the theater tech guy the like the guy who's been doing all the lights and everything steps in and plays the main role and he is so phenomenal and cute and wonderful and it's it's a very great final performance yeah. there and they do end up saving the camp not because of anything troy did um but how did it get saved it said in the, it said in the yeah. story uh it's because of troy he has a he runs an airbnb out of his office oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i <laughs> forgot so he had invited these like people to come invest but they had no money because they're all so stupid like he is um but he had been renting out his office as like an airbnb and the guy who was there felt moved by it and he ended up investing so yeah. but to jump way back um oh. the other two main characters um are uh amos and rachel some rachel diane or something rachel rachel we're, we're getting there just pulling up you have a rebecca diane not rachel rebecca at all diane. <laughs> um and they are they went to camp for like 10 years together and then left and were super close she had a crush on him he turned out to be gay but they remained super close friends i mean what theater person hasn't yep and uh and then they've now again for another 10 years have been teaching every summer at this camp and it's their highlight because they get to be the top dogs and help these kids perform but they also just they get to write an original musical every year um that's like the premiere performance and so for them this is like their chance to be the star that they always wanted to be um and you find out like they had done Juilliard auditions and stuff and didn't get callbacks. Well, he but... <laughs> didn't get a callback. And then she finally tells them towards the end that she actually did get a callback, but gave it up so that they could continue to be friends. Yeah. And so, yeah, the um, 
Rebecca Diane ends up she also gets a job performing on a cruise ship throughout this so she kind of starts disappearing and she just doesn't know how to tell him and when she finally does uh Amos just blows up at her and is completely from a lens of like no like we're in this together and it's us and I don't actually want to like I want to be a star but I don't want to accept that that's not happening in my life, and I want that to also be your situation. He wa- they want to be aspiring performers who are full-time teachers forever. Yeah, and I feel like it's probably the fear of rejection after not getting a callback for Juilliard for him, and then finding out she did also is going to be, you know, it's hard yeah. to get back out there. <laughs> yeah, um, but again, through this final performance, uh, he kind of realizes and accepts the fact that they have different paths in their lives now and they can't just be tied up in this camp together and so he remains and is going to continue to teach there going forward and accepts that he is a good teacher he helped that uh, girl get the role on the tv show and then he goes to like beg her to come to the performance and finds out she's leaving right now to go get her her big break and he you know does the smart teacher thing and lets her go and doesn't make her feel bad about it or blow up at her like he probably would have at the beginning of the movie um and and then yeah the the tech guy um throughout the whole movie you see little moments of like oh no the the he needs to perform a dance real quick for the kids and so he puts it on and he's incredible uh he hears a pitch when he's trying to fix the electricity and so he sings a little to it and he has a really nice voice um and then it's tech week and everyone's complaining about every little thing and he's the only yeah he's running (laughs) everywhere to fix this and doing everything and you just he's really warm and endearing and one of the nice things again that troy is like a a good guy he kind of connects with him and likes him and keeps going to him for advice because he recognizes that this is the guy who's keeping this camp running not any of the squabbling bickering other counselors yeah um and then yeah they end up the girl gets the the gig so she leaves um and they ask him to step in and so he plays the role of adult joan and it's so sings his little heart out yeah it's 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 worth watching just for that because you have to watch the build up to get there but it's worth watching just for that scene Um, so like I said, like if you wait, if you don't want to pay for it, just wait for it to come to regular streaming because I, I think it is a cute, quick watch. Yeah. And so, yeah, in the end, all kind of ends up, well, the random guy invests. Which she wakes up from her coma. She wakes up from her coma, which is cool. Uh, and her one thing, she like wakes up and goes, no, don't give it to Troy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, she doesn't realize that he's succeeded and saved everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall pretty good what would you give it um i'd give it like six and a half seven yeah i'm kind of in the same boat i'd probably the ending is amazing but it was a little slow at the start and i just didn't connect too close to the material which is partly because i never went to theater you camp never theatered yeah i never theatered but like i don't know i think there is some universal experience in that world and it just still didn't quite land for me so I'd i mean probably yeah, go everyone six. everyone's met a theater kid <laughs> well everyone's met a theater kid but also like i did so- soccer camp i went away to summer camp in the adirondacks and like yeah you can see where you find your group you find your little culty people and go crazy for the summer and are weird and have all your little inside jokes and do stuff but yeah i don't know i just it never fully went beyond kind of just fun comedy yeah not that that's inherently bad but yeah anyway six out of ten what up adirondack listen up squad game maybe uh zip it could we just get you guys to sh- oh what a beautiful no oh. that's dope All right. Thank you for listening to our episode this week. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Nerd and Normie and tune in every Monday for a new episode. And if you're listening on YouTube, like and subscribe. And if you're on audio platform, 
Uh, please give us a five-star review. It really helps us out. Thank, Thank you. you.